Welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. Yes, it is Cheapo time in the nation. Today, something special. The little guy, the little brother to the HT-118A. This is the all-new HT-113C True RMS 6000 count beast from Habitest. Let's take a look. Now, the 113C has some pretty big shoes to fill. The 118A was a huge and continues to be a huge success for Habitest. What do you think? Can the 113C pull it off? Can it follow in those big footsteps? I sure hope so. In the box, what do you get? Your standard test leads. Once again, these are the generic leads we're seeing in pretty well all of the Cheapo realm today. Uh, not to say that that's anything bad. They're definitely a huge step up from previous years. These ones have a 600 volt Cat 3 rating, 10 amp max. Um, they feel good. They're a little bit on the small side for me, um, but that being said, uh, nice and sharp at the ends. They're not silicon, but you know what? For a cheapo meter, they're not bad at all. You also get a tiny user manual. That being said, it's all you need. It has the basic rundown of what you're getting, the specs, and basically it's a decent little pamphlet. Speaking of specs, the 113C is nothing to sneeze at, bless you. Yes, it does 100 millifarad, 10 megahertz, uh, 600 volts AC DC, and the list goes on. It's got that live wire, non-contact voltage, like ramp milliamp. It is barely loaded for a small cheap. Now the one thing it doesn't have is those really neat illuminated input jacks. Yeah, when you turn on that 118A, it tells you where to put them, but you know what? I'm not Now we all know beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think this is a pretty good looking meter, but your mileage may vary. Some people say it looks a bit like a toy. Um, I don't know what exactly what they're talking about. I just think it looks modern, up to date, and overall, I like it. Aesthetics aside, it does have the same feel in terms of the rotary selector switch, and that is a good thing. Um, not too soft, not too hard, compared to its uh, big brother, the 118. It is fairly good. One thing it is missing on that selector switch is that nice painted pointer. I think this is a great feature. What does it cost? We're talking a cent, if even that. Stick a little dab of illuminated paint on that selector dial and it goes a long way. Another feature the 113 is missing is the fact that it shares that milliamp input along with the rest of the standard inputs. Whereas on the 118, it is a separate input altogether. Both meters have that nice visual indicator at the top, so when you turn on the meter, they both give you a green for go. I'm going, I'm going already. Now when you turn on that meter for the first time, it goes into DC volts, which is really nice, as opposed to the Habitest, which 118A, which goes into volts AC, prefer the DC. Now, looking at those two screens, we can tell there is definitely a discrepancy in terms of the overall size of the display. Big, gorgeous LCD display, dual display on the 118, and a much more smaller, conservative, shall we call it, typical LCD display on the 113. With both backlights enabled, you can see that gorgeous illuminated backlit LCD display on the 118. Absolutely amazing. 113, still nice, but definitely nothing in contrast to the 118. And yes, that backlight only lasts for around 10 seconds. Why? Why? On the reverse side of things, we can see both of them do have that flashlight. Definitely a brighter flashlight on the smaller 113. In fact, I am blinded. Wow, that is like really, really bright. Much more subdued on the 118. And you can see it's a different style. They actually have a nice little halogen style protector over the LED. So it is not so darn glaring. I like it. Tilt stand as well basically identical and what nice touches they have the fuse readings on the stand finally the ncv non-contact voltage we have that protruding extrusion as i like to call it let's see if it is anything other than looks or is there actually a filament extending into the abyss finally if we look at the rotary selector switch i do like what the 118 did in terms of the overall color scheme they've utilized uh, makes things a little more easy to read um, it's more subdued Dark. starting off the nine o'clock position we have the off followed by volts ac dc millivolts ac dc frequency and duty cycle up to 10 megahertz continuity and diode 
At the 12 o'clock position, resistance, 60 mego. Capacitance, up to 100 millifarad. Microamps, AC-DC. Milliamps, AC-DC. High current amps, AC-DC, up to 10 amps, with frequency. Finally, non-contact voltage and live detect. Finally, take a look at the select buttons on the far left, basic function. In the middle, we have the hold, standard hold, nothing fancy. Beside that, we have the max button, followed by the flashlight and backlight. Now the display itself, once again, um, not as good as the 118. Viewing angle is fairly decent. Um, you do lose your ability to see it at certain angles, but I mean, basically it is your standard LCD display. Starting things off with the Voltage Precision Reference Board, sitting at 250 millivolts, showing 250.2, pretty well spot on. Let's move that over to the standard voltage side of things, should see 2.50 volts, 2.505, looking good. For all you millivolt fans, 0 0.001 volt, spot on. I mean, probably 118 in terms of low voltage as well. LED testing time, here we go. Can we be five for five? Fingers crossed. Starting off with the green LED, ever so lightly lit, and we do have a forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow LED, no problem. Moving down to the red, looks good. Over to the blue, yeah. What would be five for five? Come on, baby. And we are good to go, 2.6 volts, forward voltage drop, and it is lit. Good stuff, 113. A solid 3.2 volts, maximum output voltage in diode mode. Take a quick look at resistance sitting at nine mega ohm right now, no problem. Eight, nice and fast to range, take it down to five. There comes that 6,000 counts res resolution. 4.984, bring it down to four. 3.9, 3.987, so it is a tiny bit off in the lower ranges. One mega ohm exactly, a little bit better, 0.996. Already Aphrodite default test leads are in my hot little hands. Here we go, three, two, one, continuity, bring it on. Hey, not bad, these are default leads, remember, loud, latched, now the one thing we notice, that indicator light is too slow to latch. It is not being illuminated. Now if I hold down on those test leads, then we have illumination, but yeah, it's too bad it can't be a little more reactive. Pro Masters, baby, coming at you. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wow. It is super, 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 super fast. But once again, even with the Pro Masters, it is too delayed. That visual indicator is just useless. Too bad. Ugh. Maximum output loudness in continuity. A nice and loud 75.7 dBA. That's about two decibels louder than the 118. Capacitance testing is next. We're going to cut out the middleman, go straight to 100 millifarad. I hope we can get there. That is the maximum that this meter is capable of. Here we go. And we are in progress. We see that meter is ranging, getting a nice visual indicator. It is still in the microfarad mode. Come on, HT113C. Now, right now, we're approximately 10 seconds into this test. It is still thinking. Granny was slow, but she was 99. Come on. Pick it up a little bit. Wow. It is seemingly stuck in microfarad land. The heck is going on? Finally, we're in millifarad. Wow, that took a long, long time. There we are, 90.5 millifarad, 91. Definitely that is in the right range, but geez, that took a long time. Whoa, 
so it is capable of that 100 millifarad spec, but just don't be in a hurry. Milliamps are next. We got a 600 milliamp threshold on 113C, identical to 118. So let's take it up, sitting at 278 milliamps thereabouts. And yeah, no worries here. So cranking it up, 311 milliamps, 413, 443 with the 500 milliamp. And we're showing 497 milliamps, not too shabby. 550, we're gonna go to that threshold, right to the cusps, 600 milliamps, and spot on. We're gonna go a little bit over, see if we have any alarm. Just says over limit, there is no audible alarm. Bring it back down, and we are good to go. 600 milliamps is our threshold. Wow, is that a thing of beauty or what? For El Cheapos, for your viewing pleasure. Oh, I just love the look. Now, I'm gonna take things up a notch. We've got three variants of that Habotest 118. We've got the uh, Rich Meters 114A, the Habotest HT 118A, the Kaiwitz HT 118A, and of course, the star of the show. Yes, that's you. The HT 113C from Habotest. Now, we're gonna turn on all of the big guys. And what do you notice? That is correct. The Kiwitz defaults to DC volts as soon as you turn it on. Whereas we're on AC mode in both the Rich Meters and the Habotest. So we're gonna have to hit that function switch once with those two guys, bring us into DC. And you can see we also lo lose that dual display in DC mode. Okay volt even even Steven 1.08 1.08 1.08 and 1.09 now they're all kind of fluttering but they pretty well are all even Steven okay here we go up up and away 2.8 volts 2.8 across the board up to 6.1 volts a thing of beauty 6.19 6.18 6.2 6 and 6.2 up up and away 13.3 volts and look at that 13s all the way you know this means good luck here we go up to 21.9 volts that's big at 22 even 22 even steven across the board and we're going to move up to the max which is 31.5 volts 31.6 for the rich meters 31.5 for the habit test 31.5 for the kaiwis and 31.6 for the 113. There you go. In terms of a difference while they were just too close to call. Now the 113 is sadly lacking that nice bar graph at the bottom. Would have been so cool if they could have somehow implemented that on the small LCD display, but it's not the case. I'm gonna start moving the voltage up and down. And really, I don't see a big difference. Let's just settle down at 14.5 volts and they were all pretty well the same so there you have it folks i'd say too close to call even steven across the board that was fun that was fun that was actually a lot of fun high voltage test we're going to take it just over 600 volts dc three two one here we go Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, 600 volts plus. We're getting an audible alarm. Looking good, let's try that one more time. Yeah, no worries there. Good stuff. We're gonna take a look at that live wire right now. We've got it into live wire mode. Slightly different than NCV, which is non-contact voltage. In this case, we are making contact with a high voltage source. In this case, we're gonna be probing this extension cord, 120 volts, and you take one lead and put it into your positive and start probing. And once it detects something, you're gonna get this live indicator. It's basically telling you now that you have a live voltage source and be careful. So yeah, it's kind of a neat feature, I guess. 
um, is what it is. Now let's try that non-contact voltage mode. This is a touchless form of NCV. No probes required. And here we go. So if you're working on drywall or what have you, it's a way to detect if there is anything live that you cannot see. Not the most sensitive out there, but uh, yeah, it seems to work. AC bolt's not a problem with the Habitus 113C. Ten megahertz not a problem for the 113. Frequency works just fine. Another cool function with the 113 is the fact you've got this max feature here. I'm in DC volts right now. I will hit the max, and basically it's almost like a touch hold. I've got a uh, 1.5 volt battery here, and I am going to test it. And let's get those leads on. And 1.581, and as soon as I take off the leads, you can see it has retained that reading. Now there's no audible beep to let you know it has got that setting, but uh, yeah, it's there nonetheless. Uh, kind of cool. Already tear down time. On the back of the chassis, you guessed it, no shielding. Hey, no surprise. It's held in by four Phillips screws, non-captive, so careful you don't lose them. At the top on the left, we have a 630 milliamp ceramic fuse. And at the bottom, 250 volt 10 amp fuse on the current side. Interesting enough, instead of your standard current shunt, here you can see the holes that were originally designed in the schematic for that. They've replaced it with a current limiting resistor. Those input jacks are in there fairly decent. Uh, nice globs of solder. Um, no complaints in that department. They are the split variety, but they are as well being retained by the pushouts on the back of the chassis, so they're not going anywhere. We also have a diode clamp over here. Moving up the line, we've got our tin can oscillator over here. IC is Cobb, but hey, look at that. That is our EEP ROM, TC024. Chances are then we've got a Dreamtech IC doing all the work. Good to see that NCV actually has a metal filament at the top. It is not there just for good looks. It's actually doing something. There we have a few different variants of the 118A. On the far left, we have the Habitest HT118 itself. In the middle, we have the Rich Meters, which goes by the 114 name, followed by the k wheats over here, and of course, the star of the show, the 113 on the far right. You can see the 118s all are identical. Yes, indeed. These are all one and the same units, right down to the ICs. The only difference in terms of performance that I notice is on the Kiwis itself and the Rich Meters, you do have an audible beep in diode mode. So if you're into bench electronics, TV repair, um, that will come in ultra handy. I do love that audible diode. So once again, they utilize the same fuses across the board. Obviously on the 113, it is a smaller variety, but they are all ceramic fuses. The three 118s are all PCB'd as HT118A, HT118A, and 118A despite uh, the Rich Meters 114 name designation. HD113C, yeah, you know I like it. This is one cool multimeter in a really neat little package. It's fast to range, it's fairly accurate, and boy, it is packed with features. It's lacking that gorgeous dual display of its bigger brother, but hey, with the small screen, it still manages to provide what you need nonetheless. If you're looking for a small multimeter, this is definitely on your short list. For me, it doesn't replace the 118, but it is a great meter nonetheless. True RMS, 6,000 count. No bugs to report, it just plain worked. The HT113C from Habitest gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. Plenty more coming. To the next one, keep on testing.